Hello and welcome to our Feed Yard Extension webinar series. Um, we're excited today to uh, bring another topic to you that we hope is timely and something that's going to be useful for you and your operations and maybe for your employees. Um, if you're watching this webinar online after the fact and you'd like to evaluate the program, we would sure uh, welcome your comments and feedback. If you want to go visit that go.unl.edu feedlot webinar, I know it says fall 18, but, but there's access there to, uh, to see our current um, webinar and offer feedback. So if you would, please uh, give us your feedback after you watch this to see if it was useful and, and also what other things you'd like to have us present on. Okay, Brian, if you want to advance one today, our topic is uh, lameness in the feed yard. And our, our speakers are uh, Dr. Halden Clark and Brian Vanderlei. They're both veterinarians based at our Great Plains Vet Education Center, GPVEC, out near Clay Center. Um, it's very timely and, and obviously an important topic that affects a large proportion of animal health pools and so on in feed yards. So, I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, thank you, Galen. Yeah, so we're gonna talk a little bit about lameness exams specifically today. We're gonna to pretty much stay away from the different diagnoses and how you would go about treating uh, different lameness issues. Our focus today is pretty much to, to walk you through how you do a lameness exam in cattle and some of the stuff that you would, uh, um, some give you some basically some tips and tricks on on how you work your way through lameness exam to get a good diagnosis. Why uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you a way that's gonna look like more work than just looking at them in the pen and deciding um, how to treat. We're gonna show you how to pick up a foot and, and do a little bit of an exam, and we're gonna justify that the the extra effort because I I really think it's worth doing some extra work when you're looking at lamenesses. There are so many things that can cause lameness. You can have the, the regular old garden variety foot rot, which is gonna be a huge problem this spring with, with wetter than normal conditions and, and muddy pins, things like that. There's also lots of other things that will cause lameness. You can have toe abscesses. If you got cattle that come in, you can, uh, after having been through some rough handling, you can get heel and, and sole bruising uh, from bad footing. You can have cattle that are just sore from, from a truck ride, or you can have laminitis. You know we're in a too. So it's, it's really important if you're going to effectively treat those things to get a really good diagnosis. And if you pick up the foot and do a good job of evaluating the foot, you'll get a better diagnosis, which will allow you to target therapy more appropriately to the actual condition that the calf's being affected by. By targeting that therapy, you should be able to improve outcomes. And overall, it gives you a lot more power to monitor um, animal health and treatment efficacy in the feedlot setting. The first stage of a cattle exam is to make sure you're looking at the, the calf walk. You want to watch them walk. I think it's best to watch them walk in a couple different areas. You can look at them walking in the pen. That's maybe the most natural environment to, to see them walk or, or looking at them in an alleyway, something like that. It sometimes is kind of difficult, especially if they're not really lame, to figure out which foot or maybe which feet are affected. Sometimes it's all of them, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's a couple. And it, it's really important, especially if you're gonna pick up feet to determine whether they have one lame foot or two, or maybe it's all four. A Couple things to look for. Um, when you're looking for a, a front or a back, you'll notice that when they are lame in the front, they will do a lot of head bobbing. You'll notice that each time they take a step that their head will, will quickly pull up and drop down if they're lame in the front. If they're lame in the back, you'll notice that their hip often is kind of tilted up toward the side that they're lame on. And what they're actually trying to do is they're taking, they're kind of trying to jump over their lame foot. They want to put as little weight for the least amount of time on that lame sore foot. And that really can help you if you get kind of trained to looking for that jumping over the sore foot, you'll be able to pick those out a little bit quicker. One thing to remember about lame cattle is that the vast majority, probably 90% plus of lamenesses are located in the foot. There are definitely Ill, uh, injuries and things that happen higher up in cattle that will cause lameness, but most of the time we're looking for something that's in the foot. Um, 
make sure that you conduct a thorough exam and, and Halden's going to show you in the next slide a little video demonstration of how you pick them up and do the exam. But being thorough doesn't necessarily mean you have to be slow. You just want to make sure that you, you cover all the bases, you can get through it pretty quick, clean the foot up, and I highly recommend the use of hoof testers, which Halden will show you here in the next slide. I'm going to go ahead and start this video, Halden. All right, sounds good. So cattle in a feedlot are frequently pretty dirty, so having a pair of latex exam gloves is nice. Uh, and a quick release Honda on a foot rope. Uh, so here you can see, just putting that rope on, find, find something to wrap the rope around, take two wraps to make sure you've got the strength to hold the foot in position while you examine it. Uh, get it lifted up in position and then you're gonna need to clean it uh, if the mud is wet, a garden hose or something along those lines will work well. If it's dry, you'll have to use a hoof knife and get that mud and dirt scraped off. You've got to be able to see the skin, especially between the toes, to make an accurate diagnosis. Uh, so we've got to get it cleaned up pretty well. Once you do have it cleaned up, you can see the calf kick a little bit. Look between the toes. You've got to make sure that skin is, is intact. That's where a foot rot lesion would be found. So that's an important place to look. And then you can see the hoof testers here. So what we're looking for with this is a consistent, repeatable flinch from the animal that would indicate that the area that we're squeezing with the hoof testers at that time is, is sore than we would expect. It's, it's painful. So uh, this calf, there was no response at all with the hoof testers at the toe or across the sole or at the heel. So we determined that with this calf, the, the source of the lameness was not in the foot. All right, Brian. Let me advance to the next slide here. So, any other comments, Helden? Well, I think uh, one thing that I want to stress is that with any foot-related condition, early treatment is really important. Uh, the reason for that is because the foot is made up of so many dense, tough tissues like bone, ligament, and tendon, uh, that, and those tissues have reduced blood flow compared to tissues like skin or organs. Because of that, the animal has a harder time fighting infection deep in the foot or in the lower leg. So when an infection like foot rot or a sole abscess begins, if it is allowed to go on and on and without treatment, it gets in deeper and deeper. And, and if bacteria reach a joint space or a tendon sheath or get in between any other two tissues in the foot, it's really tough for the immune system to get in there and fight that infection. So that's the reason why early on treatment can be very effective in treatment outcomes can be very good. Most animals will return to full health, but if you're treating a foot-related problem late in the disease process, your odds of getting a complete resolution are much, much lower. So again, early treatment is by far the best with any foot-related condition. I would, I would add to that that there's so many different circumstances that producers will run into and, and so many different ways that we raise animals and manage them. I think it's very important to work with your local veterinarian to develop the protocols that work best, um, to work, work with a veterinarian that, that is, is aware of how you produce your cattle, especially in a feedlot, um, a consulting veterinarian or the veterinarian that does your work is the best one to help you decide how to treat different forms of lameness they can also work you through the, the diagnostic process as well so working with a veterinarian is an extremely valuable resource and we we highly recommend it if you have any questions or, or further comments uh, dr clarks and, and my email addresses are both up there on the screen and there's a phone number that you can reach us at so um, feel free if you have questions to let us know and with that very good uh, guys one question that I have um, about this topic is is you guys have told me over the years that foot rod and and toe abscesses are not the same so can you briefly in 30 seconds explain that to me again 
yeah, I can take a crack at that. So foot rot is defined as an infection um, with a particular type of bacteria that's in the interdigital skin, generally speaking, uh, where a toe abscess is, is uh, the result of trauma to the toe where there's a little pocket of pus laying between the lamina and the, and the sole of the hoof right in the toe region that needs to be drained. So there's a, just a different type of treatment between those two conditions and, and it's important to know which one you're dealing with. And taking a look at that foot in that lifted position is gonna be what you need to determine what you're dealing with and to get the outcome that you're wanting. So to add to that just a little bit, the, the infection, like a, a typical foot rot, foot rot is usually very responsive to antibiotics. So treatment with, with several different kinds of antibiotics that are on label for foot rot is, is a good way to resolve those cases quickly. Antibiotics will have no effect on a toe abscess. So they, the antibiotics, what, what Dr. Clark was talking about earlier with, with being able to get not only blood, but also the, the antibiotics into the tissues is very difficult with something like a toe abscess. So it's hard to get the drug down to where the, the abscess is happening with the toe abscess. So the most effective treatment for those is to clip just a little bit of the end of the toe off to allow those to drain and heal on their own. Very good. Thanks, guys. Again, if you've uh, watched this and you'd like to give us feedback and evaluate the program, please visit that a web address. As always, uh, uh, Brian and Holden uh, gave their contact numbers, and if you have other questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. Thanks for watching.